underground tunnels to music that is no way underground. This is the guitar strip in the heart of downtown Sydney. And here's a customer who's in for a big surprise. He's here to buy a guitar, and he's sitting down to jam with a real live rock legend. Does it get any better? Here's a secret even the locals don't know. The salesman is Mark Evans, who is the bass player for the world-famous heavy metal band ACDC. Mark played on the key albums, Let There Be Rock, TNT, and Dirty Deeds. He quit after having creative differences with the band. ACDC's total U.S. album sales is an amazing 63 million. With 90 million worldwide, this makes ACDC the fifth best-selling band ever, and they're still going. I don't think they'll ever finish. I think they'll just keep on going. Um, they're, they're touring the States at the moment. Now, they, the band started New Year's Eve 1973, so we're coming up pretty close to 30 years, and I think now that band should be taken in the same terms as bands like the Rolling Stones. So, what has fame and fortune taught him? Show a bit of respect. That's it. You know, just respect them. You know, things are not always there when you want them to be, but don't get hung up about it. They'll be, if you want them to be there enough, they'll, they'll be there eventually. Man, I'm getting deep. I have to go have a joint after this. <laughs> I don't even smoke. If there's one pastime that the people of Sydney just love, it's surfing. And here's a Travel Channel secret. More world champion surfers live on Sydney's northern beaches than anywhere else in the world. The craze was introduced to Australia by Hawaiian surf legend Duke Kahanamoku at Sydney's Freshwater Beach in 1915. We found the board which the Duke hand-carved himself from local timber. It's held pride of place in the Freshwater Surf Club ever since. The sport took off and now everybody's gone surfing. Sydney has no fewer than 70 beaches, and over 20 miles of the coast features broad stretches of golden sand. The most famous is Bondi. Every traveler to Sydney wants to go to Bondi for a swim. But did you know you can learn to surf here? They actually have a surf school. I'm Dan. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I had my first surf lesson yesterday. I got up twice, so at least I'm going to get up three times today. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm from Austin, Texas. I've surfed once. I'm Nicole. I'm from New York. I've never been surfing. Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm from San Diego, California, and I played on a surfboard a few times. Nothing serious. Hi, I'm Sasso from Helsinki, Finland. I had my first uh, surf lesson yesterday, and today I'm going to do some uh, cool cuts. Okay, the next way is if the wave is going to break on you, then you've got to try and go through it. So to go through the instructors the claim most people can learn to ride after one two-hour lesson and they absolutely guarantee they can teach anyone after three lessons. All right, here we go, it's the wave of the day. Paddle, 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 and jump! Anybody can surf. People with disabilities can surf. Even people who can't walk, we've taken them out on bodyboards and, and caught waves. So um, everybody can have a go. Surfing can be dangerous. Each year, about 3,000 people are rescued on Bondi Beach, most of them after they've been caught in a strong current and dragged out to sea. 
Sasol, the guy from Finland, can now impress the girls on the beaches back home with what he calls his cool cuts. Bondi is so close to the city, many locals go for a surf during their lunch break. But if you have time for a long lunch, you can catch a seaplane from Rose Bay right on the harbor just behind Bondi Beach. And here's a Sydney secret we'd like to let you in on. Rose Bay was Sydney's first airport. Huge flying boats took off from here, bound for destinations in the Pacific, Asia, and Europe. Palm Beach Seaplanes runs a daily service from Sydney over the northern beaches to the Hawkesbury River, 40 miles to the north. And here's a Travel Channel secret. On the way north, you'll fly over Avalon Beach, where the residents refuse to allow their beach to be used as a film location for Baywatch. They lost out on millions, but they got to keep their beach to themselves. Now this don't look too much like the city of Sydney. In under 30 minutes from downtown, you reach the Hawkesbury River flowing through primeval bushland. And at Windsor, a town on the river, there is one of Sydney's best kept secrets. It's Clydesdale's, the world's only horse-drawn restaurant. Get up, go. The converted 1890s carriage is drawn by a team of Clydesdale horses, which were historically used to carry knights into battle. The owner, Chris Wells, is head waiter, barman, and stand-up comedian. Here we go. We're going to an uncontrolled gallop in a moment. If you notice your glasses just sit there on the table, they won't, you don't need to worry about your glasses, they'll just sit there. The coach meanders through the historic town of Windsor, named after the famous royal village on the River Thames outside of London, England. Aussie Airline Qantas may be the safest airline in the world, but this is the safest horse-drawn restaurant. In case of an emergency, oxygen is going to drop from above your head. <laughs> there are life jackets under the seats. And there's only one exit. That's out the back. There is an extensive a la carte menu on the cart, sorry coach, and a full bar on board. This is not a chuck wagon. They don't cook on board, so Chris calls the orders through to a local restaurant. Oh, and the only thing not on the menu is, you guessed it, horse. Okay, we have the beautiful oysters. Where else can you book out an entire restaurant with eight people? A quick gallop from Windsor in the center of downtown Sydney, you'll find 41 restaurant, which is, that's right, on the 41st floor. The restaurant consistently rates in the top 10 of Sydney's world-renowned dining experiences. But that's not why we're here. The big surprise attraction of this luxurious restaurant is the view. Not from the dining room, but from the men's bathroom. Down on the street below, just out of range of level 41, you'll find the pie wagon called Harry's Café de Wheels. Started by Harry Tiger Edwards, they've been selling Sydney's best meat pies since 1945. It wasn't always a gravy train. In the old days, there were city ordinances forbidding sales from a wagon. And at one stage, Harry used to have to move his van because of the law. So he used to move the van to the left two inches, and the next day he'd move it back to the right two inches. And that's how he got around that law. There are plenty of pies to choose from, but the favourite is the tiger. Harry was a Yorkshireman so from England, so that's where the peas come into it. So we've just uh, elaborated a bit more and put mash and gravy with that, and that works really well. And tiger is Harry's nickname, so that's why we've called it the tiger. And this has been a pie stop for the stars. Uh, this is Kevin Costner. He really enjoyed the tiger here. He was a real fan of that. Had a couple of those while he was here. Pat Rafter, US uh, champion, uh, Olivia Newton-John, uh, and Elton. And how is this for a Travel Channel secret? The most unlikely customer is someone we normally associate with chicken. The Colonel, enjoying the pies. He, uh, he enjoyed them so much he actually had three while he was here. It was fantastic. And it wasn't a chicken pie, it was a beef pie with sauce, as you can see.